welcome everybody. Sorry, we'll kind of kick this off a little bit. Um, I want to go around and do some introductions and uh, explain my role uh, a little bit here. Um, tonight is a little informal in that the last couple of years, um, there's been a lot of complaints and concerns from the Danvers community in particular, voiced around the airport. Uh, and I wanted to a chance with my town hat on to reach out to the group of people that I've heard from over the years with concerns and try to, you know, I need to get a little bit more information uh, and I wanted to hear it directly from the folks most affected. So before we go around and do introductions, I will introduce myself. I'm going to be a little, um, uh, I've got two personalities here tonight. I'm wearing uh, my town hat as director of land use and community services and a resident of Danvers. Um, and then my other hat is I, have, I am an airport commissioner. Um, but tonight I'm here to try to wear my Danvers hat. I can't completely divorce my roles, but I am here to um, listen to you from the town perspective. Um, and before we go around, we'll start with our state representative, Sally Perrins. Thank you so much. I know you've been involved in this pretty heavily, probably going back to April of 2019 when we had a meeting at the Holton Richmond Multipurpose Room. Correct. Yep. Long time. So ha you? happy to be here. Um, uh, as I said, I'm Sally Burns. I'm our state representative. I thank Aaron and Alicia Linehan of the community land, used to be planning. Yeah. Well, community land yeah. service yeah. services. Thank you. You actually wear three hats, town, resident, airport commissioner, and I think as an airport commissioner, you're sort of the town's representative on the Correct. airport commission. Yeah. So, Schizophrenic. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, happy to be following along, wishing that we have some more to show for all of the effort, but I appreciate the work of everybody here and many others to reduce the airport noise that's being inflicted on those of you who are here and several others. So thank you very much. Hi everybody, uh, Norman Abbott, uh, Regional Director with Congressman Mullen's office. Good to see all of you. The Congressman has uh, done, uh, I think, the Clear Skies? On the Quiet Skies Caucus. Quiet Skies Caucus. Quiet Skies Caucus. Skies so caucus and has, um, taken has raised some of the dual concerns that I know yep. many of you have with the FAA directly um, through the circulated runs and posting group. I know we're trying to get that taken care of as quickly as possible yep. for the 2030 deadline. Um, and it's co sponsored a bunch of other legislation, including stuff that would allow, both allow the airport to institute caps uh, on when flying happens starting at, I believe, ending at 10 p.m. and starting at 7. Um, oh, I'll go in the back. I'm sorry, I was going to go in the back row. That's perfect. Go in the back row. There's <laughs> Mayfield yep. and Jane Dean. Um, I was one of the first two Danvers commissioners at Beverly a long time ago, the early 90s. But I was against, uh, I and Ron Roy, who was on it, now lives in Arizona, we were against the expansion <coughs> up there. So, and that was. Jack Monahan was the mayor of Beverly, and he agreed with that. And when he retired and Scanlon came into Beverly, Scanlon decided he was going to make the airport make Beverly money. And then it, everything just blew up. And it was, it was a sports line field. It went to a um, something else. Now it's regional, and now it's going to be international. Flights here going to Puerto um, Mexico. I have one going off to Switzerland. I have one coming in from Switzerland. I would still watch those planes. When I come home, if I have time, I go up and around the airport. I have pictures of the planes. I check out their numbers. I can't do anything about it, but I know and I, I let Tony know. <laughs> Tony, I keep Tony updated. And it, it's, um, and one said he would rather the Jets up there. Well, you're going to have jets. Because back in the 90s, and Sally will probably remember, when it was in the airport, I called it Little Logan and a jet port. And they went after me, every single one of the saying that. And 
that's what it is now. Thank you. And they're okay. done. And if 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 the M A um, you know F A A and M A A want to buy my house, they can have my house. A couple of mail, they'll have my house, and they go right up and they go on to two seven. That's it. I'll get out of it. <laughs> Sorry, you're not. <laughs> we'll all sell, right? Yeah. <laughs> Start our own town. <laughs> Sir. Bob Barrows, I live at 518 Lane and Danvers, and I've been complaining about the increased noise in our neighborhood since mid-2020, um, mostly from the uh, single-engine prop planes and the training schools in Florida. Yep. Uh, John Stanza from 318 Lane as well, same thing that Bob had said, it's the, uh, it's the touch and goes of Piston River and the operators that are just formed by it. Same complaints. I mean, we've lived there over oh, almost 40 years. And I can tell you, I was a stay-at-home mom for many of the years in the 1990s, and there was not. This, this is not what we were living in with back then. I mean, there, there were every once in a while, a plane would go over, none of this touch and goes, none of these training schools. I mean, it's ridiculous. You'll sit out there on some days and there's 50, 25 to 50 airplanes flying over your head. You can't talk. And again, I think we'll, maybe we'll talk about it later. I, I've done a deep dive in some of the data. One of the things we heard a lot over the last couple of years was something's changed, something's changed. Oh, yeah. I do think there's maybe some truth to that. It seems to be. I understand you all live it. I get that. I'm just saying, when looking at the data, the trend starts to move in 2018. Operations start to increase again in 2018. So, again, I think there's needs to be some acknowledgement that maybe that some of this is true. Um, I think right now, hey, we'll get into that, but thank you for sharing. I'm, uh, I'm Joe Ronaldo with my hand family. I will tell you that some of it's true, all of it's true. Over 30 years, 35 years, we never even saw a plane up in the sky. I remember going to the airport a couple times because I wanted to see a plane take off. You know what I mean? So we've been told that uh, they were going on. We just weren't hearing it because of the pandemic. We were, we were staying home more. Um, you know, it was almost like a, a, a figment of our imagination that uh, there, there had been this major uptick, but we were just and we just didn't realize it. But it was happening. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. Under the old um, good neighbor policy, which I believe should be the only good neighbor policy, um, the director Mazzetti, he had two main things in his good neighbor policy that he had everybody follow. One was that you use the preferred runway, which is 1634. The second being, don't go over heavily populated neighborhoods. That's why we never saw any. Then all of a sudden, here we go. It's like a bombing run. I made the analogy, it's like, you know, watching the Hiroshima movie where the planes just keep coming over, coming over, coming over. But come to find out, doing a little more research, that's the scariest part. Noise is bad enough. You can't enjoy your yard, you can't talk to your neighbor. That's, that's bad. But the fact that they use leaded gasoline still, when you and I can't use it since about 30 years ago, that, that to me is amazing. I don't want to hear people, you know, I don't care what party you're saying, oh, you know, we've got to save the environment. Let's go green, you know, we have to protect our environment. What about our kids' environment? You realize, you realize, of course, let me just finish this point. You realize, of course, that's all of those planes going over, dropping leaded poison on our kids, and that's been found to do tremendous, tremendous irreparable dam damage to our kids. So, so we're sitting around twiddling our tongues. Meanwhile, they're poisoning our kids. That's it. On that point, um, it's an important point, and again, I think there has been progress made on that point since this was first brought to our attention in August. Um, FAA has set a retirement date of 2030. Oh, so true. There's nothing. I'm sorry, that's laughable. That's a, Go ahead. That's, I'm sorry. that's a complete joke. Yeah. 
Slot. But so we got to live with it for seven yeah. years? We heard the fuel's up there. We're just expensive. Oh, folks. I'm folks. just being honest. Folks. I'm sorry. Folks. Folks. Tonight is just an informal conversation. We're trying to get all the issues out and understand all the issues and kind of all get on the same page so that we can kind of find a constructive way to move forward. On leaded aviation fuel, the FAA has a goal to phase it out by 2030. There is one manufacturer in the United States right now that is producing unleaded aviation fuel, and they're in Minnesota or California. Michigan. And one company, it's, very, it's going to be very, very difficult for the Beverly Commission to do much more about that. Board of Selectmen have supported this effort, and I know we submitted comments um, to the FAA or to the EPA to encourage the EPA to accelerate that timetable. I know the state of California is working very, uh, they have accelerated their plans to try to in, bring in a refinery online to provide unleaded aviation fuel um, for general aviation airports in California, and that's kind of being looked at as how we're going to bring it, you know, to the rest of the nation. Um, the commission in September, I want to say it was September, maybe it was the October meeting, um, also supported the idea of bringing unleaded aviation fuel to Beverly Airport as quickly as we can feasibly find it and get our fleet at the field certified to fly with it because it is a, every plane will have to go through a certification process to switch over. That is not going to happen overnight, and so I know it's not a non-issue, but I, I, that is probably not an issue absent some sort of legislative intervention. The Beverly Airport Commission is going to have a lot of impact on other than continuing to advocate for whenever those opportunities avail themselves to us. We're going to have to take advantage of that and make sure that our voices are heard on that factor. Well, you want to continue? Yeah, yeah, I just wanted to address the addition. And that is on my list of things to talk about, but unfortunately I don't know how deep we can go on that because there's not a lot yeah, of... We're going to be able to do it at our level. They're doing this at Reedville Airport in California. They already made the changeover. So it's available. How available it is, I don't know. But the county commissioners there will not allow, not allow any uh, Phillips of uh, letting I, I, I know what's going on there. Okay. And, it's okay, not as easy sorry. as right, what you're saying. They have entered it as a part of a lawsuit. They have now entered into a, a consent agreement with the FAA to try to figure out how to meet them somewhere in the middle. I'm not looking to go get sued by the FAA or the EPA. We're trying to figure this out. Um, Mr. Bettencourt. Can I just make one other point just because I think it's important. On the aviation fuel? Yeah. Hold on, we're going to come back. That is, that is a point we're going to get to. Let's get through the introduction. Okay. Tony Bettencourt, 15th off circle. Okay. I've, lived, I've owned the property for 31 years over there. I've lived there for 30. Okay. Uh, first 15 years, nope, we didn't have planes over there. Okay. Not like we have today. Okay. No question in my mind. Okay. Uh, another thing. <clears throat> you being a rep uh, for the W Airport. You have to watch out for the Beverly Airport. You really don't take care of the citizens of Davis. Is that right or wrong? You're supposed to be, you, the old you take is to help the city of Beverly. Am I right or wrong? Just so we get that on record. I wouldn't characterize it quite like that. And I think we've talked offline. Yeah, no, I know. And I, so let okay, me, no, let that, me it's tell you this. how I characterize. It's like I'm talking to you and stuff like that, but you, you're, you're a, being an airport commissioner, you're supposed to help the city of Beverly. That's the old you took. Just like I'm a town meeting member. I took an oath to help my residents. Okay? Yeah. Well, I guess what I view that as is I have a fiduciary responsibility to ensure that the Beverly Airport Commission is run appropriately. And I think that there are times where that responsibility can conflict with what I would do if I weren't a commissioner and I was simply allowed to advocate for the community of Danvers. Because that's why we have so many problems in Danvers right now, okay? Uh, I've been watching, I mean, I've seen so many commissioners come and go and all that stuff there, and they're always working for the airport. The neighbors always fall behind on the other side, so I think it's time that really this, the town of Danvers has to take a look at this and figure out something, okay? I don't know why they, yeah. they were uh, shuffling their, their feet. And the, uh, one other question, maybe you can answer this one thing. They were supposed to, uh, if I'm not mistaken, drop the letter in support of uh, Sally Kearns's uh, proposal. Do you know if the, the select board did that or not? I am unaware of 
a request. They mentioned well, that no, Mr. Bennett, Bennett during the meeting. Is, I don't know okay, well, I'm everything this find select out. board does, but I am okay. not aware. Did you have there been a request to the select board to support your legislation? Um, I think they've indicated that they'll support it, and we only recently You didn't get a letter from them, though, right? You didn't, you didn't get a letter from them, did you? Um, I, don't, I don't recall, but I, I know, know that we just have, we just a few days ago got word of the hearing date, okay. and that's the opportunity for anybody, not just the select board, but anyone here, anyone anywhere. Was this to brought to the commission's to attention at all? Because I've gone to the meetings, I'm new in the commission, but I, I've I've been going to the meetings for eight months or so, and I've never seen you there, I'm, and I've never heard of this. Yeah. I, no, no, this is through Damas. Yeah, no, no, I no, no. But I'm just wondering. I don't about. believe, I think at one point in the, I would say fall, maybe it was over the winter, I believe Ms. Kearns intimated that we were, that they were, she would be filing legislation, but I don't think we've heard as a formal, as a commission, that it had been filed and what. Or do with it if it were. Yeah. Because I mean that would be great to bring to the public's yeah. attention at a commission meeting. You know, you can like email Paul Paul Treffery and put that on the yeah. agenda so you can speak and at an official commission yeah. meeting or, or have somebody, you know, I think that yeah, would be it's, I'm pretty sure it's been it's been brought up and, and they are they're aware of it. I mean we've talked about it many, many times and I meant to mention Senator Lovely, um, who's also supporting it. Yeah. is doing the budget tonight, so yeah. she could not be here, but this is a conversation we've been having for three years now, yeah. so um, I'm, I'm sure that they are aware of it. Uh, I, I, I will happily send an email yeah. to them. And Just because there's the commission board is basically brand new. There's like, yeah. you know, yeah. it, it's, there's yeah, we'll all new people. Well, so. I'll, I'll defer to... Our, yeah. our guy. On the yeah, that, that would be now, are you representing Dan? I was going to say, why don't we uh, yeah. inter introduce <laughs> Kyle? Uh, I'm Kyle Rosalek, uh, 346 LA Street, Beverly, um, and I'm on the Airport Commission. So you're an appointee of the mayor of Beverly? Yes. Oh, okay, good to know. Yes. Well, welcome. Okay. And I think, um, let's just steal the mic back to Kyle just for a minute because you just brought it up. And I think this is one thing that I probably won't gain any friends in the room for saying, but I do think it's important to say. The commission in the last few years, for those of you who've come to the meetings, have probably noticed the attrition that it's a nine member board. Two of the nine are appointed, well, are recommended to city council from the Danvers Select Board. Um, traditionally, Danvers has put one staff person on and one resident. Um, basically, since 2018, I started on June, I think we had six commissioners, including two Bev uh, two Danvers at that time. Tracy Watson was the other member at the time, um, and four folks from Beverly. Um, we got down to five, I think, by 2020, 2021. We had fallen to five, which made running the business of the commission very difficult because we needed five to have a quorum and we needed five to do any business, and so it got very, very difficult. On top of that, we had an airport manager who had several extended leaves during that time frame. So basically business ground to a halt at the airport. Um, but I, where I'm not gonna make friends is I will say in the last couple of months, um, the city has filled all of their seats and now the only vacancy on the board is the other Danvers rep um, slot. Why is that? The select board had a meeting on May 16th and spoke to three individuals that expressed an interest and they're supposedly having two more party, uh, two more interested individuals on June 6th. But and from unfortunately, there, they have to go through the mayor yeah. yep. to see if yep. he's okay with it, which is kind of... Now on that, so okay. Mr. Chase is kind of speaking to a point I want to talk about. To be fair to the commissioners, um, I've, since I've been on, and I heard it even here tonight, whose rep are you? Who are you representing? Who are your function? There's not a single, I have never had a conversation online or offline with any commissioner who's ever implied that Danvers deserved anything it's getting. And the current roster, Kyle's been at two meetings, uh, Jesse Zubrick's been at two meetings, uh, 
Joshua um, Doxy has been at three, four. Um, they're all want to see this problem resolved and want to be better about it. I don't think in my time I've been on this board, we have as, this is the opening, I think we have to make some progress on this issue. I've never once heard anybody poo-poo the Danvers Beverly thing. First I'm gonna defer to those who haven't had a chance to introduce themselves. I know. I, Mr. and Mrs. Brennan, I think, Mr. Chase. We're still making our way around. Oh, I thought you yeah, wanted no, to Yeah, no, go ahead, and then I wanted to just make a comment okay. on the so, commission issue. Ace Chase, 12 Wyndham Street in Danvers. I've been involved with aviation for all my life. I used to pump fuel at Robin's Landing, if anybody can remember that far back. Yeah, I remember. This one, many hours. 80 and 100. Um, That's all Collins, was that Collins Street? Yeah, no, yeah. Off of Collins <coughs> Street, of yeah. we had two runways, yeah. and I used to fuel the planes there when I was 17 years old. Um, I've been fueling planes. I still work at the airport fueling jets and planes. I'm not dead yet from this, oh my God, leather, leather thing. Uh, the problem is uh, a lot of these people are complaining but uh, what about the people who live on or near Route 95, 128? Why isn't there concerns about the noise and the pollution there? Yeah. Where when calls. these planes go over your house, yeah. there are a minimum of 600 to 1,000 feet. Uh, you know, it's just a load of crap. It's just a, it's just yeah. a pile of information that has been you know, it's messed over and everything, and it's people called, just don't know what is going I know, on. You have to be on. I come Robert Hold on, hold on. Just, this, is where, this is where we're gonna take a deep breath. Yes. And we're, we're, we're gonna all stay. These people are experiencing something that. No, they, they're not. No, it's, they're not. It's, it's, the it's, airport has always been, and hold on, the hold on, past, I, hold on. Can 120 can operations, Correct. they're down to 80,000. I understand, hold on. It's just, we're not gonna get anywhere. That's, we need to have a little bit of empathy for someone who feels something, just because you don't agree with it doesn't mean they're not feeling it. I don't agree with it. Okay, and that's fair. you have to understand that's fair. how the town has expanded for years and okay. years and years. That's and everything. And, and I'm sorry, when he bought his house, he stood on his driveway and he could see the nine I, on uh, runway I, nine. I had only the front airfield. Ace. Okay, Tony, so don't take the so, Tony, so don't Tony. Tony. neighborhoods closer to the airport, and if people don't like to live there, sell your damn house because there's a hundred people that'll buy it. Ace. At the airport, at Ace. The airport Tony, the airport. do not take the bait. Ace, I want tonight to be constructive. Telling it's other being people, constructive, stop. it's being truthful. Stop. Other people have a right to feel what they feel. You don't yes, have they to do. Agree with it, but you don't have the right to sit here and tell them that they're not feeling it and that they're not bothered by it. Deal with it. We've got to find a way to agree on facts and find facts. But telling them to simply move out isn't going to work. It, it's, and it's not, not that constructive. Aviation and I mean, is aviation. You can't alter it like they're trying to do. Are you here to help or to hinder? I'm here to help. Okay, so far those comments are not going to help us get to a place. They're going to excite and inflame people. I need you to take a deep breath and try <laughs> to help. Um, Doug Brown, I live in uh, Anthony Lane, number 13. Um, the noise is on the landing. Doug, excuse me, could you speak up just a little louder? Uh, yeah. Uh, a little out of here. Sorry, so too. see, that's why he can't hear us now. I've been watching the news these things. <laughs> Um, it, it's, it's within the last two or three years. Yeah. The noise and the levels have really escalated to a point of you can't sit on your deck, you can't sit in your front yard. It, it's, it's outrageous. The pollution part is another issue that obviously is going to be addressed. And another thing that concerns me is the airport, potential airport expansion is very close to a high school. 
and I don't want to predict something happening, but something very well could happen. Yeah. And I don't need to tell you what the results would be. Yeah. So that's that's my take on it. I just like to be able to, I've been living in my house for 35 years. I've lived in Danvers for right. 40 years. And the high school's been there after the airport. Okay. I played hey. track and football at that high school. No, I'm, for no I'm just, I'm, I'm setting facts. I okay? But just what field did not exist when the airport existed? Stop. So don't tell me 